In the summer of 1664, a comet appeared in the skies over England. Its sallow tail could be seen with unprecedented clarity through the lens of the new telescopes owned, among others, by the king. But what most people saw was disaster in the offing. They had all read their almanacs. They knew that the apocalypse would be heralded by pestilence, fire and war. A year later, thousands of bodies killed by bubonic plague were being tossed each week into the great pit of Aldgate. And there was nothing that science could do about it except count the dead with the care demanded by modern statistics. One-sixth of London's population perished. The infection ebbed with the onset of autumn, but the trepidation hung around. For the number of the beast was six, six, six. And sure enough, up from the smoky regions of hell, in the first week of September 1666, came the diabolical fire. In the early hours of Sunday, September the 2nd, the Lord Mayor of London was woken from his sleep to be told that a fire had started in a baker's shop in Pudding Lane. When the rain started, a week after the outbreak of the fire, allowing an early stock taking, the scale of the devastation horrified even the pessimists. 13,200 houses have been destroyed, along with some of the most famous buildings of the city. St. Paul's Cathedral was in ruins. The new Leviathan, it seemed, had no fire insurance. Still, there were those who were determined that London would rise as a phoenix from its ashes and, like the reborn, rebuilt Rome, astonish the world. This sort of thing had long been on the mind of Christopher Wren, mathematician, architect and brilliant prodigy of the Royal Society. So when Roman antiquities were found in the debris around St. Paul's, one of them a tablet bearing the Latin inscription, Resurgam, I shall arise, Wren took the message to heart. London had once been a great Roman city, and now would outdo the ancients. With great piazzas, broad avenues calculated to afford geometrically satisfying vistas and up to 50 new churches. And at its heart would be a new St. Paul's, a cathedral the like of which had never been seen in Northern Europe. 